Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Labrador Beaver. And with this vehicle, we have five configurations available. We're going to start with the standard width cab because it has the best color, then it has a bunch of the accessories as well, so you get to enjoy looking at them. Now, when you look at this vehicle, you really don't know exactly what to expect out of it. It has eight really beefy off-road wheels. The underside of it kind of looks like a boat, and it's the size of like a golf cart. So what the heck is this thing? It is a monster all-terrain vehicle, and I really do mean all-terrain. Although kind of ironically, it does drive sort of strange on paved roads. So the way it works is if you give it just a little bit of steering input, it slows to a crawl. Like I am flooring it still and just steering a little bit to the right and is struggling to reach seven miles per hour. But if I do no steering at all, it accelerates just fine. It can get up to about 20 miles per hour, maybe even 30 if we're driving down a hill, but that's only when you do no steering at all. So you have to drive this thing completely different than any other vehicle if you wanna drive it fast. Instead of doing smooth controlled inputs, you whip it around with harsh, violent inputs. That is the exact opposite of what you would normally do to drive fast. That's how you spin out on every corner normally, but thankfully this thing doesn't really go fast enough for it to spin out. So here's another demonstration of its off-roading capabilities. So you see that boulder right there? That thing's like nearly vertical. And as long as we can get our wheels onto it, we can climb it. Right now we're hitting with the front, so we're not getting our wheels onto it. We adjust a little bit, get the wheel on it, and then it'll climb. Oh, it will climb right up and over the boulder a little bit off the side that's on me but you see just how amazing this thing is it's just scaling things it looks like it has no right to do that boulder is nearly vertical and it's just as tall as this vehicle heck if i didn't have the top part it would have been taller so it's weird on the paved roads amazing off-roading and you know where else it's amazing in the water well i have low standards for in the water i should say that now but the fact that it works in the water that's amazing to me and this is, of course, the best way to put it into the water. You just dump it from the top of a bridge. You have a tiny impact at the bottom of the riverbed. And then it pops up with a vengeance. And one of the really neat things about having a vehicle that's all terrain. You can go on water. You can go off road. And you can go down waterfalls. Yeah, we're going to take this thing down the waterfall. And it should do perfectly fine. Just to make sure it does good, though, we're going to add a little bit of slow-mo into the mix. Entering the waterfall, beautiful, and it's just going to go nice and easy down to the bottom, but we are not giving it an easy path. There's a boulder right in the way, and we made big contact with it, but that's not going to stop us. We should be perfectly fine to continue driving along the river. So let's see if that's true or not. Yep, seems to be driving pretty well. Is it driving as fast as before? Did anything get damaged? Oh, I'm thinking it might be driving a little bit worse because it feels like it's not going towards the edge of the river like I would expect it to. It is making its way there, but just not as fast as it would before, I think. We'll wait until it gets there, and then when we get to the end of the water, we can very, very easily drive up onto the dirt. But right now, I'm more focused on going back into the water a little bit more, so I'm just going to save this so we get a fresh one that's not all mangled up and driving weirdly, and then back into the water. And I want to see if you try to go against the current, who's going to win. It's a very close fight, but the current is just barely edging ahead and pushing us along. And just to demonstrate, when you have one that actually works and you try to cross the river, it still isn't easy because you're going to get pushed along as you do it, but it does work faster than before. As you see, we are now making contact with the land. There it goes. Took a second longer than I thought. So now that we're on the land, I can once again show you just how nimble this thing is because check this out we have a forest full of trees and usually driving through here with any vehicle isn't easy because it's kind of on a slope a little bit so you'll start to slide and roll and it's just not a pleasant place to drive through and look at this I can swerve through the trees whipping it just whipping this thing around the trees and it is doing great whoops that is, of course, until I forget to kind of look up and then I crash into the tree with my roof. All I have to do is just take the turn a little bit wider though and it'll be fine. Watch this. A little bit wider. And amazing. Like, I don't know what other vehicles I could do that with. Going up a hill that steep and then maneuvering around a tree that tight? I can't think of anything else. This thing is 
special in this kind of environment. It is completely unique and absolutely amazing that it can do that kind of stuff. And to show you just how truly off-road capable this is, I'm going to get you a car that's very comparable, surprisingly. Like, you wouldn't expect this car to be comparable in terms of off-road capability, but it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this spot, and then we're going to load up the custom version of the Hopper, which I would say is the second most off-road capable stock vehicle sitting right behind the crawler version of the Hopper. And using this, we can attempt to climb up the hill running right next to the waterfall. Now, I'm not going to do anything fancy, like approach this in a really easy way. I'm just doing a nice, steady path and going as far as it'll take us, and that's as far as it got. So it almost cleared that bump, and maybe with the exact precise speed required, you could clear it. And I'm pretty sure I'll feel almost the same doing the exact same thing using the Labrador Retriever. I just like Labrador Retrievers. I know, it's the beaver, but yeah, have you seen a Labrador Retriever? They are so cute. I used to have a Labrador Retriever. He was a good boy. Although I'm probably biased because every dog I've ever had, I would be like, yeah, he was a good boy. But I'm taking the exact same path I took using the hopper. Climbed that part just as easy. Going a little bit slow, of course, because this thing is slow. And it looked like I had a chance to climb that thing again. Just not quite. So really, its off-road capabilities are comparable to the custom version of the hopper, which is mighty impressive. I would say it might even be better on climbing really steep solid surfaces like the rock we climbed earlier and i don't think the hopper can do that that thing somehow the suspension was able to take that hit bounce all over the place and keep on going i have no idea how it managed to do that but somehow it did and now i have a really dumb and fun thing i want to test so i'm going to be right back as i set everything up okay and here's the setup we have the labrador retriever and then we have like a hundred barrels just coming at it and we're gonna see what happens as we try to drive through all of the barrels and this is going to be while the barrels are being pushed down the river we're going the opposite direction of the flow of water which probably makes things a little bit harder than if it was stationary and it looks like we can kind of push through it but it's not really working well we're kind of stuck at the moment just surrounded by barrels. You see, we kind of move them about just a little bit, but overall, barrels are stronger than the Labrador Retriever. So, next question. What if we go through the barrels with the flow of water? This should be a little bit easier than if they were stationary, I would think. And trying to go through them like this, oh, uh, we're making a little bit of progress. I see them moving more than we were going the other direction. Slow and steady, right? Slow and steady through the barrels okay yeah we made it through that wasn't too bad and i think that will conclude our water testing for now so i'll bring this guy back over to the land and we're going to do some crash testing and we'll start the crash testing off with something nice and big we're going to use the ambulance version of the 8 series no real reason in particular i chose an ambulance i just thought big heavy colorful ambulance fits the bill well so we'll put some distance between us so we can go about 50 to 60 miles per hour on impact. Oh, can we do this without crashing? Yeah, that was actually pretty smooth. And we'll tell the AI to go ahead and come at me. Don't know how well the AI will be able to drive that thing, but they'll at least be going a little bit. Have it nice and lined up. Here we go. 50 miles per hour from me, probably like 10 from them. And boom, there is the impact in the Labrador Retriever. Barely damaged at all it looks like initially let's pull the ambulance off and see if it's more damaged than it appears so the ambulance yeah that whole front end is mashed up how you doing over here all right so there is some deformation that it actually held up surprisingly well although it doesn't seem like it can drive anymore because the ai is trying to chase me and they simply cannot so we'll tell the ai to calm down we're gonna do a different test now so the ambulance can't really drive too well probably we can still drop it onto the roof right so grab the ambulance teleport and then is it gonna line up good enough it looks like it will there it is boom we have smooshed the labrador retriever really really well all right can we get the ambulance out of the way yeah we can just teleport in the air again it'll smush us again if we can't get out of the way get out of the way hurry oh that didn't work so that's what happens when you smush it twice with an ambulance that is now on fire for some reason. 
Also, you can see the engine right there. Normally, you don't really get a good clear view of the engine. That's the clearest I've ever seen it. Because if you try to look at the engine normally by opening the hood or just completely removing it, for example, you can see, yeah, there's an engine in there, but you really can't see all that much of it. You can see just the top of it, and that's it. You can kind of stick your head in here and see a little bit more of it, but it's very easy to go too far or too short, and it's so dark. Just not a good way of looking at things. So this is the best version of the Labrador as far as I'm concerned, but there are five versions as I said, so let's go ahead and take a look at those guys. We'll start off with the utility version. This one is almost the same as the one we were driving, but it only has a half top. The rear end is completely open, and then it also has a camouflage, so if you, for example, just go ahead and grab this guy and then fling him into the grass, he vanishes. Like, where did he go? Somewhere in the grass is the Labrador Retriever, but he has camouflage, so you can't see him at all. Okay, you probably saw him flying off from the distance. I don't know where he ended up at. There he is. There he's camouflaging. I couldn't see him because I was looking in the wrong spot because the camouflage is so good. How did I manage to chuck him so far? That was not on purpose. He just went for a flight. Anyways, next up we're going to be grabbing the standard. This is the most basic version. It has none of the extras. It doesn't have the roof. It doesn't have the extra seats like some of them have. It's just very basic and boring. But then we go to the crew. Now the crew, this one has the extra seats. This can move people through any terrain, but they will get sunburned. That is one thing that's kind of interesting is there is no crew version with a topper. If you want four seats, you don't get a topper. So this one is a little bit different than the topper. It has a roll bar, which is just basically the topper without the canvas on top. So let's drive this thing from the inside a little bit. So you can see the steering wheel on this thing is not exactly a wheel. It's kind of like what you'd find on an ATV, which makes sense because this is an all-terrain vehicle. The speedometer does work, but there are no pedals or anything to look at. So now, let's climb a Labrador with a Labrador. That is the sky. That is, I'm upside down. I don't know exactly what just happened there. <laughs> we were just upside down. I was completely clueless as to what was going on. Let's try that again. This time, a little bit more gently, and then a little bit less oblivious to what's happening. We're going to use the outside camera so we can actually see it rolling over and try to control it. So here we go, smacking into them, and then we keep accelerating little by little. And that, that point right there, we can't accelerate anymore. If we accelerate anymore, we're going to flip over. So instead of flipping over, we're kind of like back up, and then go on them some more, try to crush them. Just keep trying to crush them, which unfortunately isn't really doing much at all, is it? All right, new plan. Instead of trying to crush him, let's try to flip it. Yes. Oh, that was beautiful. Can we do that again? Come on. Do another flip. Do another flip. Here we go. Oh, this thing's really good at that. <laughs> that is impressive. I can't explain why, but for some reason, I'm having more fun trying to climb a Labrador with a Labrador than trying to climb the rocks. Here we go. All right. You know what? I'll call that a successful climb over them. We got on top of them, so that's... Good enough for me. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't really doing any damage. I want the Labrador to do damage from above to another one. So we're just gonna do the easy solution and drop one onto the other one. And we gotta make sure we got a good camera angle for this so you can really admire the smoosh. It's only gonna smash the rear end, but that's okay. Maybe it'll give us one that's drivable even after being smushed. So here it is, tons of slow-mo, tons of smoosh. By the way, you wouldn't expect it. But this thing does weigh about 1,500 pounds. So it does have some smooshing capabilities. And I have no idea what it's doing right now. It's some sort of like gymnastics routine, I guess. That was strange. All right, let's see. Can we drive off of them? No, we are pretty stuck on them. How about them? Can they drive out of me? No, we kind of got stuck on the back and we can't do anything. But I don't think it's from the weight. I think we're just kind of stuck. So let's try this. Let's see how much can one of these guys haul. So to do that, we're just going to grab one of the metal boxes. And we'll just change the weight up a bunch to see how much weight it can do. So by default, it's pretty light. It's only 50 kilograms. It can go up to 10,000 kilograms. We're not going to do that. We'll start with a reasonable weight, maybe 1,000 pounds. That's probably close to what you would expect it to be able to do. Like You wouldn't expect it to be able to do more than that, right? So putting the thousand pounds in, how does it do? Let's see. Vehicle, that's gonna be a little bit more top heavy than if it was actually in the bed of the thing. But you can see a thousand pounds, 
not really a problem. It is slower than normal, that's for sure. Although it's so slow in the first place, you don't really notice it. So going straight away here, topping out at about maybe 50 miles per hour. It's hard to know because we keep having to steer to not crash into the wall, but definitely slower than normal. So if it works now, what if we increase the weight? So we'll go up to how about 2,000-ish pounds. Like I'm just doing really rough weights here. So around 2,000 pounds, still drives. Again, slower than before though. You can see it's kind of like popping the front wheels up in the air just a little bit when we floor it. So it goes up to about 10 miles per hour. Definitely getting close to its limits, but I feel like it could do more. Let's really push it all the way up to 5,000 pounds. There's no way it's going to be able to do this much, right? Nope, 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 nope. It just pops a wheelie and gets upside down. Come on, scoop it back up. Uh, we cannot do the scooping maneuver. So 5,000 pounds, obviously too much. So I'll reset both of them and we're going to drop the weight down to a more reasonable amount. So instead of 5,000, let's try 3,000. I think you can do about 3,000. That's probably close to the limit. And for this, we'll start with this guy over here because this way it'll be lower to the ground so it won't be so top heavy as well. Here we go. It works. Oh, that front wheel is still lifting up. You can see that lift. But it's able to do it thanks to having eight wheels to put down the power. Again, though, it is slow. We are, like, topping out at six miles per hour, basically. Not going to go much faster than that. And you can tell it's at its weight limit because this thing is actually scraping the ground as it drives. So now I got a new thing I want to test. What about in the water? How much weight can it have there? Now, I don't think it can do 3,000 pounds because it just won't float with that much weight in it. But we could probably reduce the weight down a little bit and still have it floating. So bring the cube on over, and then we gotta decide what weights do we want to use. So place the cube right inside of it. And then for the weight, let's drop it down to, how about just 2,000 pounds? About 2,000 pounds. Or about 2,000 pounds. That's a real rough estimate. That's probably quite a bit less, but that's okay. We just wanna see. How does it do? Well, first off, getting going is not the easiest with the rocks around us. And here we go, entering the water. Will it float? Oh boy, it does float. Sort of. Like, if you're the driver, you are getting soaked. Thankfully, the engine is popped up above the water while everything else is just sinking. So it just barely is able to cope with this weight anymore, and it's not going to happen. Oh no! What happened there? Did I hit a rock underwater? Yep, there's a rock there. Well, that's going to be the end for testing here. Now, let's go ahead and move over to everybody's favorite, Leap of Death and Brutal Slope. We'll start with Brutal Slope. All right, so everybody in the comments, place your bets on how fast this thing is going to go down Brutal Slope because it's a little bit of a mystery. I've never driven something down Brutal Slope that tops out at like 20 miles per hour before. So for the Beaver, we're going to get the standard width cab because I want the most pieces possible for when we make the impact. And I noticed it's really weird here, like, steering and accelerating at the same time, that's it. We are flooring it and steering as much to the left as we can do, and that's how fast it goes. So we have to do some really kind of wacky maneuvers here just to get this thing down brutal slope even. Just doing like steer, 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 very touchy steering. And then we start going, and boy do we go, look at this, 70 miles per hour already, 90, 110, 120, and then 130, and then it just kind of stops accelerating past that. That's about as fast as we're going to go no matter what. What starts happening after that speed is we bounce all over the place so much that it just slows it down from bouncing around. And by the time we get to the bottom, yeah, usually this has happened where we don't really have control over things and we're just along for the ride, or is the other fun thing that happens. It kind of just comes to a complete stop all on its own, basically. Like, I'm not touching the brakes here, okay? This is me still flooring it, even though the engine's completely broken and we've complete, completely stopped. Just dead. So I think the best way to approach Brutal Slope with this thing is you like half the size of the slope. So you bring it up to about here, and then we can accelerate once again, get up to speed, and we'll still only be going like 100 miles per hour at most. But it's better than the alternative, which is stopping halfway down the slope. Here we go, 80 miles per hour, and you notice it's just not accelerating as fast. I think it's the difference in slope means it's going to top out at about 90 miles per hour. So really, we've had bigger crashes on regular maps all the time, but we've never had a crash this fast for the Labrador. 
So I'll take a nice close look at it with a hundred times slow-mo. The whole front is just completely caved in. The drivers have been smushed. Anything in the rear is probably okay though. So that's kind of surprising. And then again, the physics, yeah. Um, that looked wacky. Don't know exactly what that was about. It looks kind of sad the way it got smushed up in the front. Overall though, very identifiable at what it is. And now for the final test. On to Leap of Death. And again, we are gonna use the standard edition, but I'll change up the color. Instead of going yellow, we're gonna go orange. It's slightly different. It looks the same. <laughs> Maybe it's always been orange and I didn't notice. Either way, here we go. Yeah, look at it go. 40 miles per hour, we're moving now. And uh, no, we're not. <laughs> so the engine kind of blew itself up a little bit and now this is as fast as it goes. Let's do a reset and then with a fresh engine, we can go a little bit faster, maybe. Nope, that's just, that's how fast it's gonna go. This thing is so weird sometimes. Like, it's just gonna go five miles per hour whether you like it or not. Can it even climb this? Like, it was climbing these giant boulders a second ago, right? And now it's just like this easy ramp that any vehicle can climb and we are struggling. We are struggle. Oh, okay. Yep, that's, yep. <laughs> All right, let's, uh... Let's give it a little bit of help, huh? We'll put it right here, and then we'll just get a vehicle to punt it along. We'll just grab the drag version of the Burnside, and that thing will be able to push it real far. And the colors match, that's nice. So here we go. Smashing it at, I don't know what speed, because we got so much wheel spin, but there it goes. We also got Burnside flying along. Well, you can see this thing doesn't really like physics that much. And compared to a normal vehicle, it falls very, very slow. Such a strange vehicle this thing is. Like, it looks like it's flying. It's actually gaining elevation, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going upwards. Okay, well, this is a first. I have never before seen a vehicle, like not even a plane will do this normally, where at leap of death, it goes up into the sky. This literally looks like Grand Theft Auto physics here, where you flip upside down, you gain elevation somehow. That's what this looks like. And we are just miles above the place. Okay, then. Right, let's bring this thing back down to the road. And I'm going to try this. I wonder if that was caused from the damage from the burn side, or if it just does that. So I'm just dropping it off the edge now. And there we go. Now it's actually obeying gravity, and now it's not. Oh my goodness, that thing is moving so fast. Like, it's just gone already, okay? That's ridiculous, check this out. So here we are looking at it, and then, boom! That thing is a rocket ship! Oh my goodness. All right, so here's another thing I wanna test. What if we drop it straight into the water? So I'm trying to move the camera, so it looks like we're about centered over the water, and then we teleport it here, and let it fall into the water. And I think that's gonna do it for this video. Until next time, this is YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I'll know. I can tell by how much this thing disobeys physics. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. And when it hits the water, it does what? It crashes into it surprisingly gracefully. It lost almost all of its wheels. Now here's the next question. Is it going to go up into the air? Nope, it's just going to stay there. All right, that's it for this video.